All right, so we've talked about a lot of the really fundamental ideas to creating awesome animations, but one key thing we haven't talked about yet is how to make um, the motion of these things change in a way that feels either natural or just more interesting. So far, the way that things have changed, and that includes position, but also size, color, all of that, is linear. It's started and begun immediately at a consistent rate. It moves or changes, and then it stops suddenly. Um, this is very easy to program, but is not natural. Objects in the real world have inertia and friction and acceleration and that kind of thing. Um, and so when we make objects move in this way, it feels like it's in the computer. Easing is a mathematical process then of changing that. So uh, for example, they start moving more slowly, they pick up speed, and then as they slow down, uh, or as they come to the end of their motion, they slow down again, et cetera, et cetera. Um, now, Implementing this ourself in code is gonna be really hard and it's a ton of math, um, but luckily there are lots of libraries out there. And one that I really like because it's really easy is by uh, Manohar Vanga. He's got this great article about it too. There's a link in the description um, talking about this and he has put together all of these different easing functions. Um, they're designed for processing, but I've ported them over to P5GS and we can use a modified version of map which we've been using a lot um, to be able to do this. So here in his website has these awesome animations that really help you see this. Um, so for example, this is linear motion where it's moving at this consistent rate throughout. Um, and then he's got all these different ones here and you can really see and understand and read about them. So exponential and sinusoidal mapping how this motion changes over time and looks much more natural. Um, and a few other resources that I think are really great. Um, this is an animation. These are all in the images folder for this week. Um, this also shows linear as well as eased in, eased out and both, um, which is really nice. And then I think also really helpful is this 10 principles of motion design. Unfortunately, it's kind of a low res um, animated GIF, but you can see here things like timing, easing, mass and weight, anticipation, squash and stretch, which is a classic idea from early cell animation. And so thinking about adding these kinds of more natural and exciting things to your animations can add a lot of value to them. So like I said, to implement these ourself is a lot of math. And luckily um, this has been done for us. So in our um, sketch folder, I've added another JavaScript file and you can have more than one. Um, if, as your code gets bigger, it may be helpful to have separate files um, and split apart your code. So this is the easing.js, and um, this is my port of Vanga's really awesome processing version just to make it work in P5.js. And luckily, we don't have to even really look in here. I'll just show you, but this is all his hard work to be able to make this happen. Um, and you know, we can just apply this. So, but to be able to access it in our sketch, it's not enough that it's in the same folder. We have to go into our index file and scroll down and you'll see here, this is where we've loaded the P5.js. Uh, this is the sound library. This is our main sketch. And if we just add another line and put in easing.js, it needs to be in the same folder as everything else. And I save it. Now, when I load my sketch, it's gonna automatically include all that code. And I have access to uh, both the new map function as well as these variable names here, which is going to make it really easy for us to implement or to use this inside of our code. Um, cool. And we're not going to go into a ton of detail about all of the options here. Um, it's got linear motion, sinusoidal, quadratic, cubic, quartic, quintic, exponential, circular, and square root. Um, the best thing to do would be to play with these and see how they work. But basically, they go from being um, slightly slower at their beginning and end to being very, very slow at their beginning and end. Um, and then circular is kind of gentle and it's kind of like sinusoidal and square root is um, super weird. It's really fast at the end and really slow in the middle. But let's go ahead and try using this to make some stuff move around. Um, for our first example, let's just see linear motion so we have something to compare it to. So I'm gonna have a speed and a Y variable I'm going to make y equal to height divided by 2. And then in the draw, let's draw a circle at um, kind of like a quarter of the way across at the y position 
and 50 pixels. Oh, and then we're going to uh, add speed to y. And if y is, where do we want to go? We want to go y is less than half the size or y is greater than that. So we've talked a lot about you know these things so far, reversing the speed and all that. Cool. So now we should see the circle go up and down and it's doing it in this linear way. So you'll see when it hits the end of its travel, uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and shrink this just a little bit, just so we're not <laughs> standing around all day watching this guy go. Okay. Um, hide my messy desktop. All right. So it's bouncing up and down, but you can see it's this linear motion. It does not feel natural. It's this very um, like computer feeling sort of thing. But luckily, this is where easing comes in and is going to be really helpful. So um, we need to then, this will be our linear motion, and this will be our eased motion. So we want to create a new y value to draw on the screen using this updated map, map function. So I'm going to call this eased y, and the function is called map2. That's something that's defined over here. If you wanted to change it, it's easy enough. You just change it right here. Um, and that's one of the things I also really love about this is that it's a simple file. You could easily modify this. You could create your own easing. Um, you could do all kinds of cool stuff if you were so inclined. So map two works a lot like map one. It takes an input value. It takes an input range, it takes an output range, and it takes the uh, easing type and start and or both, where do you want to apply the easing to? So my value input here is going to be y, which is between 0 and height, uh, give or take. I mean, this is a little messy, but you get the idea. Uh, you know, it's actually between 25 and height minus 25, but that's fine. Um, now, our output, this is a little funky. Our output, we still want to be between 0 and height. So we're actually not changing the range of this. The input range and the output range are the same, but by adding the easing, um, we're going to uh, make that so that it flows in a different way. So I'm trying to type sinusoidal while talking, and I can't do that. So sine, soidal, and both. Now these do need to be in all caps. Generally, all caps in programming means it's a constant. It's a value that's not going to change. Um, and these are all found here. So these are my options. You can see they're assigned to numbers, which lets us control the flow of our program. It's kind of like the uh, flags example that we just saw. And then in, out, or both, which is where the easing is applied. So I'm creating this new variable eased y that uses map2. And then we can draw the circle using that. So let's do orange. And we'll do it a quarter of the way the other side. And we'll use our new eased y variable for that. So now you'll see this motion is really different. It's going to go real smooth. It's going to slow down as it reaches one end, speed up a little bit, slow down, come down. Um, that sinusoidal, obviously, we can change the type of easing that's applied here, and the motion is going to change. So if instead of sinusoidal, we do quartic much more aggressive. You can see it really pauses and it goes much quicker. Um, but it's always going to be the same rate as our other circle because we're using that same y value. So it's going to kind of fall behind and catch up, but they're always going to be basically in sync. Um, so this map two is really awesome. It allows this easing tons of control, um, but we don't just have to use it for um, position we can ease anything that we've animated so far. So let's add a few more examples. Um, let's say we wanna make a square in the middle that rotates um, and uh, use that easing for that. So I'm gonna say angle uh, is gonna be map to, we'll use the same Y value for this. You could obviously create another variable. Now that's gonna go between zero and height, but I want my output to be between zero and two pi, a full rotation. And let's do quadratic and both. And you know what? While we're at it, let's also do a diameter. So also between 0 and height, 
let's do this between um, 50 and 150. We'll do sinusoidal like that. Then we can say push and pop. We need to translate to the center. We're going to rotate by our angle. And uh, let's make it white for now. We're going to change its color also using map uh, easing as well in a sec. And then we'll do a square at 0, 0 using this diameter. So we're going to uh, do e use easing for both the angle and the diameter. And now we see the square that rotates using this easing function. So unlike the original examples we saw a bunch of videos ago where it's just kind of constant, this gives us this really nice fluid thing. You could imagine building really cool loading animations like this, like these things start to look kind of familiar. Um, so the size is changing using easing. The um, rotation is changing. We can also change color. So we talked about lerp color, where we can seamlessly change colors a little bit ago. Um, so we can use that as well. So we can define, again, just two colors. And then percent. Remember, lerp color needs a number between 0 and 1. So we can use map 2 for that as well. Obviously, you might in your animation want more than one variable that's being changed like this, um, though it's kind of cool. They're all synced to each other because you have this single value. That's going to be between 0 and 1. Let's do exponential and both. And then our fill color, instead of white, we can do lerp color from 2 and percent. So now we'll see it get bigger and become blue shrink and become orange and all of this stuff is done using easing. Um, I don't think you can overdo it. I think this is a really, really helpful tool. Um, it's a little funky, but play with it and try it. All you're doing is swapping out map for map two. Um, you have, your, again, your input values that Y is going between or whatever. Um, your output, in the case of position, it's gonna be the same. Here, it's whatever range you need, like zero to one or zero to 360 degrees, and then the type of easing and where you want it to be applied. And you could start putting all this stuff into your animation and um, it's really cool. One last thing I'll add is that it's super easy to add an additional JavaScript file here. So one thing is if your projects are getting bigger, move pieces of your code to a second file that makes it really easy to keep track or more than one. Um, or because this is JavaScript, there's tons of code out there that you can use. So if you find a cool library like easing and you can figure out how to use it, um, this could be a really cool tool for you um, where you can kind of build on the work of others, um, just like we've done here. So that's easing, really fun, uh, go crazy.